Search the scriptures for any of you think you have eternal life and there they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Allahim in you. I come in my Abba's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that come from Allahim only? Do not think that I will accuse you. The Abba, there is one that accused you, even Moses, of whom ye trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Let's take ourselves back to Numbers chapter 23 to revisit a verse that we are not already visited. And we're going to look at it again. Numbers chapter 23, we'll pick ourselves up again at about verse 18. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 18. And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. Elohim is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have he seen any perverseness in Yasharal. Yahuwah is Elohim is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. So, with that being said, remember that that word is Torah. We're going to go over here to Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to revisit the no iniquity and perverseness because we dealt with that before no sins no lies the ruach is with you and therefore a shout matter of fact pause john chapter 5 verse 25 and then john chapter 11 see this is why it's important too right and i'm going to reiterate it to the course of other 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 individuals who are tardy remaining here right because see this trump is right so you know what that means when you lay you wouldn't have heard the trumpet with it blew and he would have killed you because you would have not been there to meet him at the door. See, if I would have stood outside and we had two silver trumpets and I would have blew it, you wouldn't have heard it. So that means you wouldn't have been ready to gather, which means you're not going to make it. That means the shout of a king is not amongst you. And that goes right against what we just read on Shabbat about being a faithful servant and seeking his face because you don't know when he coming. Because when he came, you weren't ready because you weren't there. Now, you can sit back and look at being late or just being late, but you have to look at it, how that translates to your actual service to Elohim when it's time for you to be where you're supposed to be at. You're not going to be there because you ain't going to be no different than the people say my master delay is coming and he's going to appoint you your portion with the hypocrites and unbelievers because you said I got time. It's not going to matter. The same thing that happened with the women with that oil. They thought they had time. Now he's coming. Now you scrambling to get it because you weren't ready. It's not just about being on time. It's your mindset and your mentality. You're going to be late for when he get here. John 5 and 25. You see what happened with the mother's virgins? They was at the door waiting for him. They didn't have to go do nothing. They were prepared themselves. They was ready. It's about being prepared and ready. You don't want to miss that trumpet when it blow. We done went over it before. We're going to look at it in more detail. Serious when that trumpet blow. 525. Say truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming. Pause. Make that 5 and 23. That all men should honor the son. Don't you touch that. Don't you even do it. And you better fix your face. That all men, make it 21. For as Abba raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the son quicken whom he will. For Abba judge no man, he hath committed all judgment unto the son. That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honor not the son, honor not the father which hath sent him. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that hear my word and believe on him that sent me, have everlasting life and shall not come unto condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Again, this is what you're dealing with, why a shout of a king is going to be with you anyway. For the shout of the king to be with you, Yah got to be with you. If Yah's not with you, then the shout of a king is not with you, which means perversity and iniquity exists. 
You know what I'm saying? We have to be a lot more focused and diligent about your salvation just to think this something you just doing. This ain't Sunday church. This ain't no this ain't no hangout club. This your soul you talking about. Ain't nothing wrong with fellowship. Ain't nothing wrong with hanging out. But at the end of the day, that's not the number one reason why you here. I don't care where anybody gather at in this earth. I don't care what day they kept trumpets on. When Peter stood in front of the people on Pentecost, he said, deliver yourself from this untoward generation. At the end of the day, your number one objective is to save your soul. If you're not in this to save your soul, you might as well eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow you die because you're not going to make it. This ain't for no hangout. Like I said, man, I ain't got to have nan nigga walking with me, boy. I'm going to save my soul, boy. Every bit of strength that's in me. I could care less what's going on around me. I'm going to save my soul. I don't care nothing about nothing else. Screw anything else. The minute you start making this man word fit around your life, you a candidate. You a candidate to not have that shop because you don't take this man. It's the same thing we just talked about the other week, man. That means you don't have a delight. This man word is not a joy for you because you feeling like, oh, it trumpets. Let me do this here first and do that. There. You're treating this Sabbath the same way. I mean, you don't delight for it. Not understanding that that's pointing to the rest you're going to have in this man's kingdom. So that means you telling him you really don't want to rest in his kingdom. You have to really sit back and understand how your thoughts and your actions really show how you feel about your eternal soul. It's just not random stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's, but hey, you can look at it and view it however you wish. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of Elohim and they that hear shall live. John 11. Because remember, a shout as a king is among. So that's what I'm telling you. If you don't hear the trumpet, then you're not going to hear it and you're not going to live. That's why he was telling you, guess what? Moses was on that mountain. What the people around there doing? Eating, drinking, and playing. And if they would have been paying attention and been ready, they would have heard him when, they, when he was coming and they wouldn't have got caught with that sword. That's what happened when you play. That's what happens when you're not diligent and you're not serious and you're not patiently waiting on your God to return to gather you. Just like this here, sustained token life. But we ain't on these these days just to eat neither. Do you know what I'm saying? That junk ain't, yeah, you're going to eat. Yeah, you're going to join your God. But do, did you not notice that when you read Nehemiah, that tabernacles, that them people sat out there that whole time hearing that word and then they ate? Niggas be more worried about eating. Did you come for the food or did you come for the food that endure the everlasting life? Ask yourself that question. Because like I'm telling you, man, niggas is dying out here. I'm talking about people I'm knowing, they dying every day. They ain't getting killed by no violence. Niggas dying in car accidents. Niggas having diseases. Everybody that die ain't dying for no murder. 11 and 11. Mark, don't be rude, sir. Thank you. These things said he after he that after that he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus sleep, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then his disciples said, Master, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Yahushua shall speak of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking rest and sleep. Then said Yahushua unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Let us take ourselves over here to verse 23. Now y'all know that Lazarus had been laying in the grave for four days. Yahushua said unto her, thy brother will rise, shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Yahushua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Believe thou this. She saith unto him, yea, master, I believe that thou art the Hamashiach, the son of Elohim, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, the master called for thee. Now let's move ourselves down just a little bit more, because we ain't going to read all that. Let's drop down about verse 34. Now, the reason why we read the first two things so that we just read, one was to establish that he, had, he was dead. Two was to establish that if you believe on him, that this man is the resurrection and the life. And then the third, we're going to sit back and look at how that tie into the shout of, monk, uh, of a king being among them. And then how he said, those that hear his voice. Hey, hey, hey. 
grown people talking. So that means young children, be quiet. That's what that means, sir. Thank you for your participation and your cooperation. And said, where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Master, come and see. Yahusha wept. Then said the Yahudim, behold, how he loved him. And some of them could not. This man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died. Yahusha therefore again groaning in himself come to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Yahusha said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Master, by this time he stink, for he have been dead four days. Yahusha said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou would believe, thou should see the esteem of Elohim. And then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Yahusha lifted up his eyes and said, Abba, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hear me always because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now we know that he came forth. Now I'm just mentioning this here because he cried with a loud voice. And y'all know the, the, the favorite nigga verse on the street that screamed on him. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. And that what it say? Now keep that in mind about that voice like a trumpet because it will reappear. Leviticus chapter 23 for a moment. You know, it's about three, it's about three, four words for trumpet. And one of them we're going to look at too, right? Everybody know the word so far. Now we're going to see a place where the word so far is used when Yahuwah himself is talking. I surely hope a nigga don't think that he got a ram's horn. That's how dumb niggas is. And you see something and you're just stupid for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Instead of using your brain. How you using, using good common sense. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharal, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Shabbat, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a Kadesh convocation. Where it say right that blowing is just going to say Torah. Ain't even no word for trumpet. It's just going to say Torah. Just going to say. That's it, period. Memorial Torah or blowing. So when you see that, that word Torah is not necessarily referring to a trumpet, so to speak, but more so a shout or a loud cry. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, we talked about that the other day. It's Tal, Rosh, U, Ayin, and Hey. And we're going to look at that is that we want to know the man with raised arms and be joined together to the highest in his mind or his thoughts. So now we need to look at if we want to be raised up to hear this trumpet. See, let's take a look at something. Right? Hold on. Let's go. Let me do it like this here. Isaiah 18. Let's just let this is let me do it like this. here. When we're looking at Torah, we're looking at that. We want to know Yahusha so that we can be paired to his mind. Period. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we need to sit back and look. And the thing that I've been reiterating over the last few months repeatedly is his mind was not my will be done. If you don't have that mind, you're not going to meet him. You're not going to have that shout. The book tell you that this man had a mind of. In Philippians chapter two, he said, let this mind be in you. The same mind that was in Yahusha HaMashiach. And what did he describe him as? A man who humbled himself unto death? A man who made himself of no reputation? You know what I'm saying? And a man who was subservient and obedient to his father's commands, period. Another place where it's said to have his mind is that he resisted his own will or he suffered in the flesh. These are the things that you have to have if you're going to hear that shout. I'll say it again. I've said it before. You cannot make this man word fit around your life. Your life got to fit around the word. The minute you catch yourself trying to do stuff then work around and make the word work around your life, you got a bad problem. You got the wrong mindset. You got the wrong mindset. That's not the proper mindset to become a son of Elohim. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be saved like that. What was I going to go? Isaiah 18. Pick it up in verse 1. The man with the, to know the man with the raised arms and to be joined together with his thoughts, or I'll just say mine instead. We did something different the last time. Mm -hmm. 
gonna do it so it's something different for this occasion. Because that's the only way you're gonna hear that trump or hear that shout. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul, when we y'all willing, we probably gonna look at. It. That's why Paul said he not only coming with a trumpet, he coming with a shout. He coming with a Torah. He got to come with that. Do you know what I'm saying? Or it's not gonna go align with what the words say. Isaiah 18 and 1. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that send ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bull rushes upon the water, saying, Go ye swift messengers, to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers has spoiled. Now let's sit back and look at something, right? This man said that this, pe this people was terrible from the beginning. So let's take ourselves to Deuteronomy chapter 9, and let's see why he would say this here. Because he said to send these messengers to a people who is terrible from the beginning, who has been trodden down. So let's just keep this in perspective. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 3. Understand therefore this day that Yahuwah thy Elohim is he which go over before thee as a consuming fire, he shall destroy them. And he shall bring them down before thy face, so shall thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as Yahuwah said unto thee. Speak not thou in thy heart that after you who the Elohim cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness you who have brought me into this into possess this land, but for the wickedness of these nations you who adopt drive them out from before thee. Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thy heart, for thou go to possess that land, but for the wickedness of these nations. You who the Elohim doth drive them out from before thee, that he might perform the word which you who was sworn to thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand therefore that you who the Elohim give thee not this good land to possess it. For thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. And get what? When he say from the beginning, we can see from the beginning before you even came out of Egypt, you was complaining. What was the first complaint that they made? Who knows the first complaint that they made? That ain't the first complaint. I said they were complaining before they even came out of Egypt. They were complaining before they came out of Egypt. They hadn't even left yet and they were complaining. Oh, y'all don't know? Don't worry about it. Was that when he had made it harder for them? He made it harder for them. They said, man, why you got him? Man, he giving us more work. You should have left this nigga alone. It was better for us before you said something. You've been a rotten, no good people from the jump street. Don't let nobody give you like this here, right? Yeah, we y'all chosen people. That junk all well and good. But at the end of the day, you've been wicked from the beginning. That's what the word said, didn't it? That's what the word said. Ain't what I said. That's what he said. You were rotten from the beginning. And we still moving like that right now. I heard Mitchell Turner say it again. Any nigga walked in here late, you missed the trumpet with it blue. So that means you wouldn't have heard him, you wouldn't have got out the grave. Or if you was alive, that means he would have he slayed you because you wouldn't have known when the guy at the door, you wouldn't have heard the alarm. That's why I say consider the ramifications of this day. This ain't no regular day. This is the Yom Torah. So this is when the shout of the king come. When the shout of the king come, he coming back. That's why he put Torah there instead of Shofar. Or, or, or the other word for Trump to start with a wide escaping right now. I think it's your bell. I got to go back and get a ring right. But think about that though. Because when he say he blow that, that's for what? Gathering the assemblies and an alarm. So you know he finna go to war. So if you don't hear that Trump, you're not ready. And if you're not ready, he gonna slay you. Because if you ain't gathered up to the door, then he gonna consider you an enemy. Come on back to Isaiah 18. Listen to what he say, right? Oh, I forgot to go to the part where he say, go ye swift messengers. Who are these swift messengers? He's telling to go to a nation that's scattered and peeled to people terrible from their beginning. Preachers, prophets, apostles, teachers, go talk to them. Go talk to them. The reason why, that, and look what he say here in verse 3. All you inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when he lift up an ensign on the mountains, and when he blow a trumpet, hear ye. Pause. Revelation 14. So when he say he blow a trumpet, pull the word for trumpet. I meant to write that down and I didn't. I think it's so far. Yeah, I think it's so far on that verse. My memory served me correctly, but I didn't write it down. Revelation chapter 14. Verse 
14 and 6. Mm -hmm. It's so far. Mm -hmm. And I saw another Malachim fly in the midst of Shamahim having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. I want you to keep that in mind because we're coming right back to Isaiah 18 in a moment saying with a loud voice. So if he's saying with a loud voice, what he's saying it with? A shout. He's saying it with a Torah. He's saying it with that same Torah. He's saying it with a shout. Listen to what he told you. Fear Allahim. See, this, and that's what I mean. This here. If you respect Allahim, you're going to respect him in every aspect. You're not going to drag your feet. You're not going to be late. You're not going to be slothful. You're going to be diligent because it's your father. See, we done been raised where we don't really have that strong. We, most of you never really been raised to have a real strong respect for your parents. You know what I'm saying? To have a real moving at their word. And that's why we move with y'all like that. We don't consider him. This is your father. Let's see the first thing he said. He had the everlasting gospel. And what the first thing he said for you to do? And give esteem to him. So when you give him his reverence and respect, you're esteeming him as you ought to. And he say, for the hour of his judgment is come. Keep that in mind. And worship him that made Shamahim and the rats and the sea and the fountains of the waters. And there followed another Malachim saying, I don't really, we could, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city. She's become, she's made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And we talking about the beast. We don't care about the beast right now. You know what I'm saying? We don't care about that right now. Come back to Isaiah 18, because that's what we care about. He said, man, it's time for his judgment. See, it's, that's what I'm telling you. When that shout come, when that, well, it's a different word for trumpet and numbers, what we're going to read. When that come, that's coming for two reasons, gathering and war. You understand that? When that trumpet blow, it's blowing for war and to gather. Miss it if you want to. He's not going to make no delineation because you, you knew you was a Hebrew or you showed up on a Sabbath or two. If you ain't hear that trumpet, he's going to kill you. And that's the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? If you hear it, we already know what he's going to do. You're going to gather to the door. Why you think this man say you don't know what hour he coming? What did he told? Go on over here to Mark 13 before we get. I don't think that really resonated in y'all mind like that, man. There's a reason why he told you this here. Because he don't want to catch you slipping. He don't want to catch you slipping. 13 and 32. But of that day and that hour, no man know. Not the Malachim which in Shamahim, neither the son, but the father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when that time is. For the son of man is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Remember what he, what, 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 what did we just read? Send you swift what? Ambassadors, correct? So then their job is to do what? He gave authority to do this work and to watch or to, what does that line up for? Let's see. He said he gave authority to watch. What that go back to? You know what that go to? You know what that go to? Anybody in the room know? You know? He said he commanded the porters to watch. You know what that go to? Come on, Ezekiel 33. Let's go. Why you think I'm telling you what I'm telling you? It's my job to tell you that. Because if you're not on time and you don't hear that trumpet, then that sword going to come take you away. I don't want that to happen to you. Now, whether you want that to happen to yourself, only you can answer that. 33 and 1. I don't want that to happen to you. I ain't going to get no pleasure out of that. It could be a nigga I don't particularly care for. I ain't going to get no pleasure out of that. I ain't talking about because I, I don't have, I don't dislike any of y'all, but I'm just saying. For example, it could be a nigga I don't like. Ain't nothing wrong if you don't like somebody. It's not people that, there's nobody on this earth I don't like. It's a lot of people on this earth I don't care for their ways. I don't like their ways. I mean, I necessarily dislike them personally. It's, I tell you, it's, about, it's, about, it's about two and a half niggas on the borderline though. Like, boy, I don't particularly care for you. 33 and 1. And again, the word of you who came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring a sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set them for their watchmen, if when he see the sword and come upon the land, and he blow the trumpet and warn the people, <coughs> pull the trumpet there for me. <coughs> and then whosoever hear the sound of the trumpet, and take not heed, 
Take warning. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet. He took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that take warning shall deliver his soul. That's why he told he commanded the porters to watch. You better tell him when the sword coming. Say if they listen, they'll be straight. If they don't, they're going to die. No worry, worry. So far. I, what I figured we just got to double check. We're going to pull the meaning for so far due time. Just bear with me. Really, I'm going to do it when we go back to Ezekiel 18. He said, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take away, take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. And I ain't going to hell for none of you niggas. Straight up and down. I ain't going to hell for none of you niggas. Because, see, I'm not going to bear your sin. You know what I'm talking about? See, if I don't tell you, then I got to bear you. See, everybody said, we the watchmen. No, he said, I commanded my porters to watch. That means he picked people and he gave authority for people that they supposed to warn the people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. I want you. If I go to hell just because I want to be your friend, you was a fool. Paul said, I'm, if I please men, then I wouldn't be the servant of a Masha. I could care less if you don't like me as long as you say your soul. I could care less if you don't like what I say as long as you say your soul. I could frankly care less. Do you know what I'm saying? But one thing for certain, two things for sure. I ain't finna be responsible for nobody's blood in this room or on the screen. That's what I'm not gonna do. Do you know what I'm saying? Because then he gonna require that at my hand. Do you know what I'm saying? You could die. You may not even go to hell. But he say, but boy, you you knew and you ain't say nothing. Oh yeah, I need his fornication on your head. I need his homosexuality on your head. See, that's not random people in the street. Because remember what he just said, right? If the people in the coast set this person up. So that means this person was set up for that cause to watch. Not for me to run up in a nigga in the street and say, you shouldn't smoke that weed. Oh, his blood ain't on me. Oh, that's nigga stuff. That's, that, that's nigga on the corner stuff. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that what a nigga do? That's not, that's not a watchman right there. He didn't, these people didn't set you up in the code. You weren't set up in that code. You just felt like you supposed to tell everybody and you felt like you did your job and you were. Oh, no. Oh, no. But if I sit in here and I don't touch something, Oh, no, I can't go to hell for you, cuz. I can't go to hell for you. No, no, no. You're going to go to hell on your own. You're going to be warned, and if you didn't just, and if you didn't take heed, then that blood going to be on your own head, cuz I refuse. Shoot, I, if I'm going to go to hell for somebody else, then I might as well commit my own then. What you say? I might as well. Like, sit there and think about what type of sense that makes. You're going to go, perish for somebody else's sin, but you ain't sinning. You ain't out of pocket. Shoot. I might well go and get my rocks off then. Go and get you a big bag. Shoot. Go and get you some fat hags, skinny hags, whatever type of hag. You might as well get you a big bottle. And he said, I don't even drink. Come on back to uh, Mark 30. We're in verse 35. And also, don't sit there and take that as well as his coming. You don't know when your time's coming. I'm going to just say 10 minutes from now, I could, fall, I could be sitting in this chair 10 minutes from now, fall out and have a stroke, y'all forbid, and be dead. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't know when your time time coming. Do y'all even think about that? I tell you no lie, I think about dying every single day. Not out of fear, like, boy, shoot. Especially because nigga getting older, so so many people around and they are dying. So a lot of my high school peers are dead, and they not dead from violence either. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas gone. Like, they wasn't in no streets. They wasn't, they wasn't doing none of that. This is out of here. And nigga, no, you, my time is coming. I got to make sure my soul is, is ready. My time is coming. See, most of the time when you're young, you don't think about that. You know what I'm saying? You think, well, I got time. You know I'm young. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of young people. They check. They 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 uh they clock got punched. Can't think like that, man. Not in this way. If you were in the world, I could see that. Not doing this though. Not to say you got to be dwelling on dying or nothing like that there, but it's the it's the diligence. It's the urgency. You know what I'm saying? You see? Did, did, did y'all ever notice how the urgency Hamashiach moved when he was going about doing his work? He was, it was urgent, it was an urgent matter for him because he knew what? I'm only here for a short period of time. I'm only here for a short period of time. 
You know what I'm saying? In the grand scheme of things, when we look at life, he was only here 33 years. You know what I'm saying? But he knew the work that he had to do. See, you got to sit. That's why, again, all these, like this, like that's why I asked y'all, okay, where you felt your level of faithfulness at and when you started. Because, see, when you started, not when you felt like you started, because that don't count. It's like when you actually started. You know what I'm saying? See, you didn't probably have no sense of urgency. But time's supposed to go on and your urgency is supposed to increase because you got a work to do. You got work to do. I got a job to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no time to play with you. I just tell the brother today, like, boom, when I had all that time just to preach and do all that there, okay, I had time to do that. The nigga could hit me up in the middle of the day by absolutely nothing. But when I had time, to, I had to come over here and do this here. Niggas got offended because I told a man don't call my phone about no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to talk to you like that no more because I'm over here doing this. That don't mean you can't call me. What I'm telling you is just don't call me in the middle of the day like, what you doing? Nigga, you know what I'm doing. Same thing you ought to be doing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about you just want to holler at a nigga. You know what I'm talking about. You know how niggas used to do. They call you about nothing. You know what I'm saying? No, no. I'm trying to accomplish something. I ain't got time to talk to you two, three. Niggas get mad. But it's the same way most of y'all, when y'all started dealing with the word in the beginning, you was real, real enthusiastic. You know what I'm talking about? And you were focused on that. So you wasn't calling or dealing with certain people in a certain fashion. Nigga was looking at you funny. You got to, re you got to reclaim that same sense of urgency. That's all I'm saying. You got to reclaim that same sense of urgency. I got a job to complete. So you focus. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. What we at? Verse 35. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house come, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. He telling you be ready. Don't be slothful. Don't be like, oh, I got to be ready because you don't know. You don't know. Now, of course, we know the layout of how things are supposed to play out. But you don't know when you, you're going to take your last breath. You know what I'm saying? See, I'm, how many of y'all ever seen somebody die, die before? Like seen them take their last breath? You know what I'm saying? That should give you a real, real different viewpoint of how precious life is when you see somebody take their last breath. It's one thing if you've seen a dead body. It's another thing when you've seen life expel out of them. Do you know what I'm saying? And to understand that one day, that's going to be you. Do you know what I'm saying? That's going to be you. And so you got to make sure that when that last breath expel out your body, that you know in due time that he going to put breath back in your body. You know what I'm saying? And that breath being the rule, I cock a dash for that shot of a king. So y'all, your Elohim is amongst you. Let's go back to Isaiah 18. We was in verse uh, three, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when he say lift up an ensign on the mountains, anybody know what an ensign is? A banner. So what you think he mean when he say lift up an ensign on the mountain? And the word for that is neck. Neck. Noon is some mile. So you know what that'll tell us, right? Grab hold of light, hold on. Because I definitely had that. So the reason what we want with that, we want sign. And what we what I used for that was to protect the sun see. When he come back. And he, put, and he lift up that end sign or that banner or that sign. The reason why I mentioned sign. Matthew 24. And then I'm going to see who know this here. I can't see everybody because some of y'all biked up. Yeah. Where you getting seeds from? Matthew chapter 24, <coughs> excuse me, verse 29. 
Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from Shamahim and the powers of Shamahim shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in Shamahim, and there shall all tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of Shamahim with power and great esteem. Anybody know what the sign of, uh, uh, of the Son of Man is? That was a trick question because we just read it. That sign going to be him standing on that mountain. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1. What mountain shall he be returning to? Now let's pick it ourselves up at uh, Acts 1 and 6. Hello, Malia. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Master, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Yasharal? He said to them, it is, not, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons which Abba have put in his own power. But you shall receive power after the Ruach HaKadosh has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Yehuda and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of their rats. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they stood fastly, stead, looked steadfastly toward Shamahim as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said, also said, ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into Shamahim? This same Yahusha, which is taken up from you into Shamahim, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into Shamahim. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Shabbat day's journey. Now, why is that important as that being a sign? Because when he went up, and, I, and, and that's, why, that's why I say this, the sign of the Son of Man. So, why is that important when we see him describe this as a sign right here? What occurred here? So what does that line up for to show us that this was a sign? He went into Shamahim. His apostles watched him go. What does this line up with? Yes, ma'am. Story why? Yes, ma'am. On the head all day long. Didn't Elisha watch Elijah go up? What did Elisha ask Elijah for? Double portion of his spirit. So when the sign of the Son of Man come in, what is he going to do? He's going to pour his Ruach down, is he not? When he went up into Shamahim, he gave the Ruach down. So don't you realize when he cracked Shamahim to come back on the same Mount of Olives that he left from, that he going to turn around and do the same thing? And he going to come with that shout. That's why I say it's important. Like this here, right? Because I say, man, I was talking to the people in Detroit about this other day. Like, niggas be beefing in the world when we tell them, hey, boy, that's why we don't blow nothing for no gathering assemblies because we don't got no two silver trumpets. Because that junk ain't cheap. Because Cuz when it priced it before. That junk easily about a good $700 to $1,400 used. Used. Nigga sit back and look at that nigga in Atlanta crazy because he had one. He wasn't wrong though. Because if you're going to call an assembly together, that's what you're supposed to have. That's what the law say to have, ain't it? But what did niggas grab though? That ram horn, you know, because it's cheap. You can get a ram horn for $10, $20, $50 if you want it nice and spicy. Don't cost nothing to get one. You know what I'm saying? But guess what, though? That ain't what he blowing. See, see that shofar horn is going to be a little bit different than that silver trumpet sound. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to see why in a moment. Come over here to Isaiah 18. Let's bear with me. I got to try to take them all, put them together. Acts chapter 1. Back to... Uh, so when he sees, say he blow that shofar, when we look at shofar, right? Well, hold on. Let me deal with this here with this ensign about him protecting his seed, correct? Now, notice that when he danced on this here, when, when he left, he protected his seed. How did he protect his seed when he left? He gave him the Ruach. He gave him the Ruach. What does that protect him from? 
from death. So how is he protecting his seed when he returned? Because now as he's coming upon this mountain, what does he come upon this mountain to do? Sleep. To go to war. He coming to, he coming to go to war. And I'm mentioning this here because we've just been discussing this. He coming to go to war. Since I mentioned that. Bear with me, because I got it. Y'all willing, we're going to weave it all nice and tight. Come on back over here to Numbers to uh, number chapter 10. It's tying into what we're going to get in Isaiah 18. I promise it is. Number chapter 10. Now you're going to come across a different word for trumpets over here. So just keep that in mind. Come across a different word for trumpets over here. Mainly because it's plural. Numbers 10 and 1. And you who was speaking to Moses saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece thou shalt make them, and that thou make, may use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. So these two silver trumpets are for the purpose of gathering up the body and for you to know when to move. That's when they blow them. He said, when thou shalt blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but one trumpet, then the princes which are the heads of the thousands of Yasharal shall gather themselves unto thee. What y'all think that can mean? If he blow but one trumpet, what's supposed to happen? That's the rulers. That's, they say that's the rulers. That's the princes. So what does this mean? If he blow one trumpet. Well, let's look and see. Let's look and see. Revelation chapter 14. It would be the priest. In this instance in the flesh, it would be the priest. But since you said that, pause. Let me work it like this here. Come over here to, uh, come over here to Revelation 11. I'm glad you said that. Let me do it like this here. Matter of fact, we'll do it like this here because that was my intent. Just eat in any way. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. And, I, and, I, and this I looked and behold a door was open in Shamahim. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So pause. Take ourselves over here right. I want you to come to Exodus chapter 19. I want you to come to Exodus chapter 19. 19 and 13. Make it 19 and 9. We're going to look at two more different words of trumpets. Praise the Lamb. We're just going to move it how That junk that nasty, boy. That junk that real nasty. You seem to like it, though. Huh? What you feel about it? Yeah, it means it's nasty. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Lo, I came unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. You notice know what he said, that the people may hear when I speak to thee, that they may believe thee. You notice how that title where Hamashiach say you're not believing on him, but him that sent me when you believe on me. And Moses told the words of the people unto Yahuwah. Yahuwah said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day, Yahuwah will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Now see, we were just talking about this the other day, right? That's how you know, right? When you, when you present yourself to Yah, your clothes ought to be clean and your nuts and your, and your private parts ought to be as well. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no business to present yourself to this man dirty and stank. Because you know what would have happened to them people if they wouldn't have washed their clothes and washed their bodies or laid with their wives before they came? He would have killed them. We were just talking to somebody about that. He was like having sex on the Shabbat. But you going to present yourself to y'all unclean? What type of sense that made? You know what I'm saying? But that again, that's what I be telling you about people don't be knowing the law because you got people who argue about that. It ain't a sin to have sex on Shabbat. It's your sure lane. But you ain't going to present yourself to y'all like that. I can tell you that. That's what you're not going to do. Is it, it for, he clearly had to tell them not to do it because if he didn't tell them not to do it, somebody may have had and then he would have been unjust for killing them for approaching unto him unclean. Then he would have been unjust. He'd have been unrighteous and therefore all are going to hell because he's not a righteous Elohim. 
But if I tell you don't touch your, you know that he did that with the shoe bread. He told it, you couldn't, what the priest asked David, you ain't, at least you ain't touch no women, have her. He said, no, we ain't touch no women by such and such amount of day. Yeah, you can't, you can't, yeah, you can't approach the y'all like that. Oh, come on, we were just talking about this. What's what he told Moses to do? Take your shoes off. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't even bring them dirty shoes over here. But you can't approach that man like that. That's why he won't accept you if you got a dirty heart. Do you know what I'm saying? He ain't the man don't want that around him. Now sit back and think about that for each one of y'all. How many of y'all want to be around a nigga who musty? Woman who vagina seeping older seeping through her clothes. Who want to be around that? Now just imagine if your heart was the same as when somebody has an offensive odor. You know what I'm saying? This is why he said Hamashiach made himself a what? A sweet smelling savor. That one didn't want to, come on, smell something nice. Y'all don't walk past somebody nigga with stink. You know how you turned your head and how your face look? You like, what? Why do you think he feel you coming to him unclean? This nigga, dirty and stink. That's what came cool. That's why Paul, go on, go on, let's go on and grab that real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Because they ain't just talking about your physical body now. That's just an analogy. Ain't just about your physical body. Though you ought to clean your physical body. But, you know, Yahoo Dean was definitely real big on cleanliness. That's why they size my shop by eating without washing their hands. You know what I'm saying? They were real big on that. But the sad part was they weren't big on washing themselves inwardly. Having therefore, 7 and 1, 2 Corinthians, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and ruach, perfecting kadoshness in the fear of Allahim. So what is he really telling you? You think he really talking about the filthiness of the flesh as forth as you've been rolling around in dirt? No, your flesh is filthy, so let us cleanse it. Your ruach, is, what, did, what did he tell you? You come back to Exodus 19. What did he tell you in Ezekiel, right? Make your new heart a new spirit. Why? Because your spirit filthy. You know what I'm saying? So you need to cleanse it and then perfect being set apart in the respect and the reverence of Elohim. You know what I'm saying? Because if you cleanse yourself inwardly, I know full well you cleanse yourself outwardly. It wouldn't make no sense to wash your, wa your, wash your heart with the water of the word and not wash your nuts. What type of sense that make? That don't make no sense. Come on back to Exodus 19. Well, we start that. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And be ready against the third day, for the third day Yahuwah will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bonds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whoso touch the mount shall surely be put to death. Before we sit back and go any further, what y'all think that also means? Because we just read this the other day when he told them to wash their clothes. It came to my mind and rang it in my head. I couldn't go forward until we examined that. No, we really, literally just read it Saturday to be specific. So, he told them to wash their clothes, and now they finna meet Alahim, right? Before they meet Alahim, wash their clothes. We just read something about this the other day, Saturday. Be specific. Remember, man, we're asking the question. Huh? John 4. I wasn't John 4. That man came down and said that these were those who had washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And they were able to what? Approach under Elohim at that point. So washing your clothes also ain't dealing with just sitting back in the literal aspect of washing your clothes. Because I would hope niggas wash their clothes. But then you got to remember, what did he told you, right? Make sure you got your garments lest you get found what? Naked. But washing in the blood of the lamb, I want to be baptized. Well, he's sitting back looking at it. That ain't necessarily baptism. That's being washed in the covenant. Because he said they came through great tribulation. So it's not just no immersion. Because you can be baptized and ain't washed your clothes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he tell you, you know, go in there and, and, and wash your sins away. But shoot. The blood is what he was talking about. Like, it purified he was, him. He was talking about. Remember, he said that the blood of Hamashiach purged your conscience from mm -hmm. dead works. So 
when you sitting there, you washing your clothes, we're not looking at the aspect of literally being immersed, but allowing the word to wash your heart and that wash your clothes. Or like what we seen with Zechariah. In the book of Zechariah, where Yahushua, the high priest of Yehoshua, that he had on filthy garment. And what did they do? Mm -hmm. He changed his clothes. So the changing of the clothes comes from a changing of the heart or the changing of the mind. But in order to wash your clothes, you got to wash your heart. That's why he say, inside you full of dead men bones and iniquity. Outside you appear beautiful. What was that word you put out of Ezra 19? I pulled that out of there, yeah. Okay, okay. About to in a moment. Where we at? Verse 13. Oh, yeah, my bad. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sound long, they shall come up. Very well. I don't know anything about Protestants or Catholics, but I appreciate you for sharing. I don't know what he's talking about. I really don't. Uh, when the trumpet shall long, they come into the mouth. The word for trumpet here is your bell. And you know what that is? That could also mean jubilee year. And for the most of the time when that word is used, it's used for jubilee. But it's also a cornet or a trumpet or a ram's horn. And it's Yod, Bad, and Lamad. So when you look at this one here, right, he say when that blows, this is when you'll come up to the where? To the mouth. When it blows long. Just follow me, right? We get to the moment. And Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. Now, you know what he did? He sanctified the people and he did what? So once you get set apart, now you can wash your clothes. See, you couldn't wash. What did Amashiach say right before he died? I sanctified myself by the truth that you might sanctify yourselves by the truth. So you couldn't wash your clothes until he died. Once he shed his blood, the blood of the covenant washes your clothes. And then you're going to have to go through great tribulation like he went through tribulation as we just discussed. And then your garments can come out white. Or you'll be purified. Or you go through that fire or what we were dealing with, uh, strength and chaos. See, a lot of people didn't sit back and they don't really realize that. Now, that's another conversation for another time. But listen to this right here, though. And he said unto the people, be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of the trumpet was exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Now it done went to so far. You know what I'm saying? And this is also a what? A ram's horn or a cornet or a trumpet. So why would you think that this man, they could describe it, this man's voice is sounding like a ram's horn or a trumpet or a cornet? And we look at so far, you know, you got Sean, U, Pei, and Rosh. And what we're looking at, this one here is securing, appearing, or joining to the words of the highest. Because that's what they were coming up on this mount for, right? They were coming up on this mount to get this word. When this man come back with a shout and a trumpet, guess what you're going up to get? You're going to be paired with the word. So we need to look at these trumpets in a little different fashion. That's why you said that when they blowing and you're not on time and you missing it, then it's showing I'm not paired with this man's mind. I'm not paired with the word. You're going to miss your joining together. The man say, I and you and you and me. You have to look at it literally like that and move in that exact fashion. Okay, that brother's talking about things that I have no knowledge of whatsoever and I cannot give him an intelligent response. So... Nevertheless, uh, now with that your bell, y'all bought Lamar. What would you use for that, sir? Because that's what he said. When it blow long, that's when you come. Mm -hmm. So we see that yard. We have sit back and see that works. We got that bot, and we see that son, and now we got the teaching. So the son teach you the works, so you can get up here on this mountain. And what is Moses getting ready to do do for these people when that trumpet blow long? Take them up there so they can get taught these works so they can be able to meet this man in peace. Because you know what happened in Exodus 20. What did he give them? He started giving them the law. And get what? They broke that ASAP. Shoot, they broke that before he gave it to them. You got to remember, he gave a manna before that. He told them, you know, the seventh day of Shabbat now, don't take you still. Don't, don't you go out there because there ain't going to be none out there and they broke it. He said the son gave you the work. Mm, well, teach you the work. 
He gonna teach you the work. And you know what the work is, right? To believe on him whom he has sent. He came to teach you to believe on y'all. That's the work. The law coming. You know, everybody feel like the work, the law. That ain't the work. Because you're supposed to keep the law anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? But faith every man ain't got. We all know it niggas who keep the law ain't believe nothing. And truth be told, you ain't really keeping it if you don't believe. But when you don't really have a belief in the law, you lukewarm with it. You do the parts you like. You disregard the parts you don't like. Straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no if, ands, or buts about that. When we just talking about that, 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 that believing on y'all all in the law. Niggas be like this. Oh, that nigga sound like a Christian. He talking about faith. I sound like a Christian. I be like, nigga, I open up this law and show you faith. You know you ought to go to hell because you ain't got no benefit teaching the word because you don't even know the very law you proclaim and upheld and shove down people's throat. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's all in there. I'm talking about, I ain't got to go past, we ain't got to go past Deuteronomy and see he teach you plenty of faith. Stupid nigga don't even realize that I had to be faithful for you to put the blood on the, on the, on the, on the door pole. It was faith that got Abraham justified. It was faith that got Jacob through. It was faith that got Isaac through. It had to be faith for them to walk past that Red Sea and not think that that ocean, with that sea was going, was going to kill them. See, but that's outside the law. Besides the fact we go look at Deuteronomy 32 and 20, and he said these are children in whom have no faith. Besides the fact Deuteronomy 6 and 4 say, Hear ye, O Yasharal, love you, who are your Elohim with all your heart, and you were commanded to believe. Besides the fact that when we get out of the law, Psalm, 7, 30, Psalm 78 say these were children who didn't believe in the salvation of Yahuwah. They weren't steadfast in his covenant. Well, or, or, or the simple fact that we could read right here in Exodus 16 and 29. He said, how long will they not believe me and disobey my commandments? Go all day. You know what I'm saying? Got them for days. Repeatedly. Over and over and over. When this man told you, you think a man live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of you, who a man lived, the man was telling you to trust in him. Because, you know, before he told you that, he say, you walk through these places and he say, your shoes ain't went old, your clothes ain't went old. None of that. He said, you still don't believe me. What did he not say in Numbers 14? He said, how many more signs I got to show these niggas? How many more? They still don't believe me. But he told them to go search the land. Why, you say, why, why do you think he told these people and, and number 14 they weren't going to get in the land because they gave a bad report of the land? It's because they didn't believe. He said, oh, ain't none of y'all getting in here. That's why in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, he said the gospel was preached unto them as well as unto us, but didn't profit them, not being mixed with the faith in them that heard it. But the word ain't going to give you no gain of profit. You don't believe it. I promise you that. You don't get no gain of profit. You don't believe it. A lot of people wonder why they don't see, they don't feel like they get no gain or profit from the word because you don't believe it. How you going to get a gain from something you don't trust? How you going to get a gain of something you don't even believe in while you doing it? You're just going through the motion. You might as well live how you want to live. Come on back to Isaiah 18 though. I'm trying to tie in a whole bunch of stuff in. I'm about, about an hour. I ain't trying to go too long. But I'm trying to get it all the way in we still holding Numbers 8, Numbers 10, though. I want you to look at verse 4, right? Because that's why I'm showing you the purpose of this here. Right? He said when he blow the trumpet long, everybody do what? Come to the mount. He said when the, he say when, when, when the Malachim spoke, it's, uh, the voice of y'all they heard, it sounded like a what? A shofar. Ram's horn, a cornet, a trumpet. That's what this man's voice sounded like. And we still holding Revelation 4, so just follow me. Matter of fact, let me finish Revelation 4 first. Because Revelation 4 would be the better track for me to take before I go to Isaiah 8. Huh? He said, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in Shamahim, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show these things which must be thereafter. And immediately I was in the Ruach, and behold, a throne was sat in Shamahim, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and a sardin stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, and sight like unto an emerald. Who told you about a rainbow being over a throne? I wasn't Isaiah. We went over this before, but it was a long time ago. 
Let's go on and look at it right now. Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 26, 25, 25, 25. Remember, Ezekiel chapter 1 is talking about this man's return. That's what the vision he was seeing. I can't recall. I know Rainbow in the name of the title. You'd have to, to find that out yourself because I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Probably so. More than likely. Uh, yeah, more than likely. Very highly likely. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne and the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness, upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man above upon it. Remember, it's a sign of the son of man. What did he tell them before he got crucified? When he was quoting Daniel, you shall see the son of man coming in his esteem with all the Malachim with him. And I saw the color of amber as the appearance of fire ran about within it from the appearance of his loins, even upward and from the appearance of his loins, even downward. And I saw it was the appearance of fire and it had brightness round about as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud of the day of rain. What is the bow for? To not kill the people. So when this man coming back with the appearance of this rainbow, he coming with the appearance of the covenant. And he's coming to spare those who he's coming to spare. And he's coming to kill those who he's coming to kill. There was the brightness of the likeness of the esteem of you, or the likeness of who? And the sun is made an express image of his person. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So the same thing that he hearing this voice in his trumpet, this is correlating with the resurrection of the dead. This is what the Malachim showing John. He said, it's got to happen thereafter. Come on back to Revelation chapter 4. Huh? What, Ezekiel? You all right? Verse 4. Revelation. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven ruachs of Elohim. And before the throne was a sea of glass like under crystal in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a, was as like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts each had six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and, the, and they rest not day and night, saying, Kadash, 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 Yahuwah Elohim Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give esteem and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who lived forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him and sat at the, on the throne and worship him that lived forever and ever and cast their thrones before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Yahuwah, to receive esteem and honor and power. Thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. That's what y'all need to remember. That everything was created for his pleasure. Not your pleasure. His pleasure. See, that's what you forget. So you think you're here for your own pleasure. You, here for, you were created for his pleasure. See, that's what he told you in Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? My word to fulfill all things is not going to come back to me void. It's going to be prosper to the thing that I sent it to because all things were created for my esteem and my pleasure. See, a lot of people want to sit back and look at y'all like a man. Well, well, if he's God, why would he do that? Because he can do what he want to do. He do what he want to do. Like Paul say, nay, old man, you reply us against Elohim. You that bold? Niggas that bold. Come on back over here to swing down some more. I think we want to take ourselves to uh, Revelation chapter 8 and 1. And when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in Shamahim about the space of an half an hour. And I saw the Malachim which stood before Elohim and to them that were given seven trumpets. And another Malachim came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer with the prayers of all the Kassid upon the golden altar, which was before 
the throne. Now, again, how many trumpets? Did everybody know about this one here, right? He had how many trumpets? Seven. Seven trumpets. Let's look at each trumpet and, 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 and see how that rolls. Let's take ourselves to verse six. Do y'all know what these seven Malachim line up for? What these seven trumpets for? What they line up for? Line up with the priests and, and Joshua. How many priests was it? Seven. How many trumpets they had? Seven. When they blew them trumpets in Joshua, what happened? Kingdom fell down. Once the walls fall down, what you can do with the city? You can overtake it. So when Yahusha coming back and blow these trumpets, guess what happens with all these people kingdoms? Taking them over. That's why it's important to understand what he trying to mean. So, the seven, and he said, the seven Malachim, which had seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first Malachim sounded, and there followed hell, and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon their rats, and the third part of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass burnt up. So when the first trumpet blow, then you know all the vegetation going away. The second Malachim sounded as it was a great mountain burning with fire with cast in the sea and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had, that had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third Malachim sounded and there fell a great star from Shamahim burning as it was a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and found upon the fountains of the waters and the name of the water of uh, the star is called Wormwood and the third part of the waters became Wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now you're going in a moment you're going to see when we go back to Isaiah 18 why when we look at that inside of that banner it was to protect the sun see. You know what I'm saying? Cuz look at all this stuff he said going to happen when this trumpet blow. Cuz remember he said set up an inside on the banner and do what? Blow a trumpet, right? When they go to blowing these trumpets it's going down. He said in the fourth Malachim sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as a part of them was darkened, the day shone not the third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard a, a Malachim flying through the midst of Shamahim, saying with a loud voice, destruction, destruction, destruction to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three Malachim, which are yet to sound. Now, keep this in mind. What do these trumpets sound like to y'all? It's forth as the effects, the things that are occurring after they're blown. I'm talking about something that's in the law. This is exactly what's the, that's what that's what happened in Egypt. Oh, the plague! He didn't say a lot enough. My apologies, sir. Oh, I thought he said something else. He said it so low. Yeah, he said it so low. I thought he said something. Else. My apologies. My apologies. The play did did he not turn they turn they water and make it uh make it bitter? Did he not cause it to go dark in their cities? I mean, did he not cause their water to become blood? Remember, right? What did he say? Ain't nothing in the earth that's gonna be done that ain't already been done. It's not every, everybody love to scream when they talk to them Christians about the law, right? You who would change if not? Ain't that what they love to say? Don't the book say Yahushua HaMashiach the same yesterday, today, and forever? Now what make you think he gonna do anything different than what he did before? Cause guess what? When he do it, everybody gonna know. Boy, that's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's in the... People ain't even gonna be thinking about that in, in Revelation. They gonna be like, boy, ain't that what they said happened in Egypt? Ain't that what they said happened in Egypt? Did he not tell you that he said the time will come when they will no longer say Yahuwah liveth with brought the children of Yasharal up out of the land of Misraim, but Yahuwah liveth with brought the children of Yasharal out of the north country? Oh, they gonna know. I'm gonna crash you niggas like I crashed them niggas the last time. I just been sitting back biding my time to let you build up your iniquity to the full. Continuing in chapter 9. And the fifth Malachim sounded, and I saw a star fall from Shamahim unto their rats. To give to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose smoke out the pit, and smoke of a great furnace. And the sun of air was darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And then we know them locusts came out. And you know they had that in Egypt, did they not? So then them locusts come up. Now they tormenting people, killing people. 
killing people to the point of remember what we just looked at not too long ago. All this happened and the people still didn't do what? And all that happened in Egypt and the people still didn't do what? They ain't turned either. You know what I'm saying? So this is why you sit back showing you, you better get your mind right now because once that man hardened your heart, it's over. That's the point I'm trying to illustrate you with. Once he hardened your heart, it's over. Do you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all done seen it in person. And it ain't even got to be nobody who claimed that they know they was a brewer walking in the word. You know what I'm saying? Once he hardened somebody, it didn't even got to be anything of dealing with the word. But once that man hardened somebody's heart, boy, it is over. Ain't nothing you can say to him. Why do you think he told you he had to take out the stone, a heart of stone out of you and give you a heart of flesh? Because flesh is pliable. You can enter into it. You can move it. You can fashion it. You can't do nothing with a stone. A stone is a stone. You can kick a stone and it's going to hurt your foot. Why do you think he told what he told Paul? You kick, it, you kick it against rocks. Nigga, what's wrong with you? Verse 13 of Revelation 9. And the sixth Malachim sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before Elohim, saying to the sixth Malachim, which had the trumpet, loose the four Malachim, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four Malachim were loosed. And then you know he let out a whole bunch of stuff that were letting out fire and brimstone. In chapter 9. And he said, listen, I want you to read verse 18. Listen to what it said he happened to him. Third part of these men were killed by fire. See, now he didn't do that in Egypt, though. He did the opposite. He didn't kill them by fire. What he killed them with? What he told you, how he killed the world the first time. So you know he got to come back and do it different because he told you I ain't going to kill you by water again. I'm going to kill you with what? So why he coming back with fire instead of water? That's why I'm telling you it's important because you mess around and you don't hear the right trump and guess what's going to happen? That fire going to get you. And if the fire don't get you, maybe the uh, the water turning to blood got you. Or maybe the trees getting burnt up got you. Or maybe because it went dark, it got you. See, this is all the stuff these niggas talking about we leaving in 2019 and ain't none of this happened yet. What you thought this stuff going to happen in two weeks? This is going to be happening over an extended period of time. Like, you know, it didn't give a timeline in, 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 in Exodus of how long those plagues last. So it seemed like they came back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? But we don't actually know how long that took. He could have played them with locusts for two years. He could have played them with locusts for two days. He could have played them with locusts for two months. It don't say. You know what I'm saying? Come over here to Revelation uh Chapter 11. Because chapter 11 is when he let, let loose that last one. And the seventh Malachim signed on there with great voices in Shamahim saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our, our master and of his anointed one, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before Elohim on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped Elohim, saying, We give thanks, O Yahuwah Elohim Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou should give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the Kassed, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. Now granted, when this seven trumpet blow, y'all know what's going down, right? You know these nations running them up. You know what I'm saying? They running them up. That's why they say they angry. Remember what we read in Revelation 17? All the nations of the earth are gathering together to do what? To fight the lamb. And everyone with the lamb is what? You got to remember, that means faithful be reliable. So if you late, you're not reliable. You have to sit back and look at that. That means y'all couldn't rely on you to go to war when it's time to go because you're not where you're supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? How can he trust you to go to war and you ain't even where you're supposed to be? That's a part of being faithful is to be reliable. He can count on you. Make sure that man can count on you. You know what I'm saying? And at least for the, the women, because you know the women ain't going to war, but look at it in this way. The women ain't supposed to look at it no different. Ain't one of y'all, wouldn't none of y'all want to be a part of his army? It's okay if you don't, because everybody ain't got that type of heart. And ain't no shame in that. Don't make you no less of a man. Everybody in, in Yasharal wasn't no warrior, no mighty man, nor wanted to fight. 
We got plenty of booth for that, don't we? A lot of them say, no, I'm going to the hall because I ain't on that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That don't make you weak. It don't make you a coward. It don't make you. Some of them will feel for those. Some of them are like, boy, the people going to kill us. Do you know what I'm saying? Because they didn't trust in Yah. That's why I say perfect love cast out fear. That's why Yahushua, shot Son of Noon, and Caleb said, boy, we could take them. Because the people were scared, wasn't they? Caleb and Yahushua. And what he said about Caleb and Yahushua, they had a different spirit with them. They had a spirit of Elohim. That's why they weren't scared. And it wasn't, they weren't scared because they were just some big bad killers. They trusted in Yah. That's why they wasn't scared. You know what I'm saying? When David came through, David was a jet, wasn't he? All these grown men afraid of Goliath. David say, this man, this uncircumcised Philistine defy the hearts of the, uh, the, the words of the living armies of the living Elohim. He said, boy, just like I got delivered from a lion and a bear, I'm going to kill this nigga today. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have no fear. It wasn't because David just, and David was a killer. Let's not get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? It's a real live warrior all the way around the board. You know what I'm talking about? But he had no fear because he trusted in Yahuwah. That's why he was able, I take anybody down. I don't care who you are. That's what a warrior spirit, a lot of dudes feel like they, some dudes are warriors, but guess what though? If you ain't got no trust in Yahuwah and you see certain stuff, you might fold. When you see it, it might be too much you can take. Some of these dudes on the street, real live warriors, they just fighting in the wrong army. They fighting in the arm of the devil. You know what I'm saying? They had needed the kind of, because guess what? Get Psalm 140. Let's go to Psalm 140. This is cool. This, this is the reason why I was telling y'all this because that's what was in my mind. And then we'll come back to Isaiah 18. So you got to realize something, right? When he come on that banner, come with that ensign or that sign on that mountain, he bringing, he coming to protect his children. Because y'all are a man of his word. He coming to protect his children. Because he's not going to allow this to happen to any of his children. He's not going to let none of his children die. Some people be like, but I thought we said we were going to be persecuted and overcome. You ain't died, dummy. You just slept for a season. Psalm 149, verse 3. We can make it verse 1, though. Ain't going to hurt nobody. It trumpets anyway. That's what you should be saying when you heard the trumpet blow. Hallelujah. Sing unto Yahuwah a new song and his praise in the congregation of the Kassad. Let Yasharah rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For Yahuwah take pleasure in his people and he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the Kassad be joyful in esteem and let them sing aloud upon their beds. Now why? Now you think he really talking about you singing aloud while you laying in the bed? Mm, 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 mm. You really think he talking about singing aloud while you laying in the bed? He said, let the high praises of Elohim be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon, upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute unto, upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his cause said. Hallelujah. That's why I say... I told her I had a home girl. She said, that ain't right. I say, feel how you want to feel. He said, that's an honor. Ain't that's the same honor he bestowing upon a Mashiach? He going to be binding king. Pause. Come over here to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Singing along. Why you, why you think you singing along on your bed? Because you done got up out the grave. It's a good day. Nigga dying today, just the wicked. Didn't he say that he'll wash your feet in the blood of the wicked that you might know that it's a reward for the righteous? Mm. Why you think Hamashiach walking through with, with bloody feet? We done went over that before. I want to wash mine. I ain't got no shame in it. That's why I try to stay strong. See, be like, see, shoot. I'm trying to kill me a couple. They been black. I'm, I ain't even talking about just no regular niggas in the street. I'm talking about niggas who been blaspheming my God. Niggas talking about, where he at? See, most niggas hear that, that. He ain't got no mercy. So, yeah, you think I'm talking about old homosexual nigga or old fornicator. Or don't, oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about that nigga talking about y'all waiting on your sky daddy. You know what I'm saying? That's who I want. Old scoffer nigga. Oh, you thought it was a game. Where your sky daddy at? Mm-hmm. I got a sky sword for you, nigga. Come on over here. Come get your son. Mm -hmm. Old scoffer. Old scoffer. Come over here, come get you some, nigga. It ain't no time to play now, nigga. Shoot. I got a nice shark's war for you, too. He put it in my hand. Fresh. 
it been waiting to shed your blood for a long time. Mm, that's what I said. Praise the name of my the sword in your hand. Swore, nigga, like, hallelujah in your mouth. Fat sword in your hand. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm going to lock a couple of you niggas up. He say this is honor for all his set of part one. I'd like it, please. That's why I'm looking, I'm looking at the thing he say he going to honor the people with. It's not even the fact of, oh, we're going to kill people. It's the fact it's an honor. I say, wait, how can you believe which receive honor one from another, not the honor that come from Allah only? Hey, that's the honor that come from Allah I'll cut me a nigga too. And like he said, I want the scoffers, the mockers. I care less about a punk or or or, or adulterer. Mm -hmm. You that shit. Niggas just want to do his thing. Yeah, I don't know. Shoot, I don't care nothing about you. Where's your Alahim? Mm -hmm. That's the white man book. See y'all believe. See your pineal gland. I want one of you niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I want one of you niggas. Oh, chingy nigga. Sound want to be deep nigga. I'm gonna deeply cut your whole head off. And hope he reanim and hope he reanimates you quickly and toss you in the lake where the worm dive not and the fire shall not be quenched. So I could be abhorred every time I see your face. Oh yeah, all all that there. All that there. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Oh good old child molester too, cause we don't cut your genitals off. Cut your genitals off, you nasty bastard. First Corinthians chapter six. I told my homegirl when I first got him home, I said, that ain't right. You shouldn't feel that way. I said, shoot. Took a pull on that blunt, said, I bet you lying. <laughs> I'm just being honest. That's what was going on <laughs> during that conversation. I ain't even tell you no lie. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't in the word that long. All I know was this here, though. I want a part of that. <laughs> I know I want a part of that. I wasn't thinking about no race of people, neither. Oh. Not all. I was older white. You know, I think the older white. I wouldn't think about none of that. I would just think about the enemies of y'all. Whoever hate my God, you hate my God. You hate me. You hate. You hate. Me. Come on, man. Sit back and look at it, right? If somebody said something bad about your daddy, and your daddy raised you, fed you, clothed you, taught you, you a bust his whole head. You know how little kids get about their daddy? They get offended. See, most of us don't know that because most of us wasn't raised with our daddy, or our daddy was a piece of crap. But if you around somebody whose daddy was solid and was real, they like to say, my daddy better than yours. We ain't even, the worst part of that black people ain't used to hear them conversations. A nigga's arguing about their daddy, looking up to their daddy, wanting to be like their daddy, get great. We see, we feel like that about our mama. We don't feel like that about our daddy. Cause most of us raised by a woman. So you get great little offended, somebody say something about your mama. That's why I think to a certain extent, subconsciously, that's why black people have an easy, Easy, easy way of bucking y'all because you ain't never been raised to have that respect and reverence for a man. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. Because most of us was raised with women. Just like when you look on sports, you always hear, I want to say hi to my mom. You rarely ever hear a player say anything about their daddy. You matter of fact, it's so bad that they rarely even ask players about their daddy and a lot of them players had their daddy. You know what I'm saying? See, them crackers paint that narrative like a lot of them players came from a single parent. Come on, man. A lot of them do had their daddy, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them do daddy was right. You, you rarely hear them talk about, like Mike Conley played for the Grizzlies. His daddy was there. They barely talked about his daddy. His daddy was a tri-star. Kobe Bryant, daddy was there. They made a fell out when he got grown. His daddy was there. A lot of them basketball players, daddy was there. A lot of them were there. A lot of them football players, daddy was there. No, that wasn't real, Daddy. No, he met, he definitely made a song called Biological Didn't Bother. Yeah, he definitely did. Yeah, that was his stepdad. Sure, you know, a lot of them niggas that was raw had their daddy, though. Hmm? A lot of them niggas that was raw had their daddy. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, because it's a narrative that they paint. And it's, to, it's to, to, to lessen the importance of fatherhood, truth be told. So I, and that's what I said, it's just my personal opinion. I think that's why we come to the word, you have that subconsciously in your head that you don't have that reverence and respect for a man or a father as you should. And that's why we find it so easy to be disrespectful to Yahuwah and not respect him. You know what I'm saying? Because most of us don't come from that environment of seeing that on a regular basis of young men and children having that level of respect for their father. You know what I'm saying? I know, shoot, I know a majority of my peers, boy. They daddy wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Not all of them, but shoot, most of them. 
for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Some of them niggas was on drugs. Some of them niggas were locked up. Some of them niggas were hoes. Some of them niggas just was pieces of crap. Some of some people, right? Some of them just didn't know how to deal with whatever issues that they were having with the mother and they allowed that to affect the relationship they had with the children. You know what I'm saying? You can't never let that happen. I don't care what you and the mama going through, boy, but you need to iron that out by them churn. You can't do that, you ain't an adult. You can't tell me you no man, you can't do that. Thank you, well, shoot. Well, ain't, most of y'all ain't got that problem. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got that problem. You got a problem. That's horrible. That's horrible. It's all right, Abigail. First Corinthians chapter C, verse 1. He said, dare any of you having a matter against another go to Torah before the unjust and not before the Kaseh? Do you not know the Kaseh shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Now you sit back and think about that, right? See, this is why I told you this before we just haven't exercised it. Because if it was something going down or y'all had an issue, you're supposed to be able to say, okay, if I couldn't iron it out with this person and I got two or three witnesses, you're supposed to bring and say, hey, you're supposed to bring it in front of the whole body. And y'all supposed, if you say you a sanctified one, you're supposed to be able to judge it according to the word. If you're going to judge the then we just read and say you're going to judge the world. How many of y'all feel like you can judge properly right now? According to the word, not according to how you feel or what you think right. I'm talking about what's written in that book. In every matter. I'll take that silence as a no. <coughs> no, I was looking for a response. God was going to be... Greatly disappointed. That's the proper answer, sir. And every one of y'all in here should be able to judge in all things according to the word and not according to your flesh, not according to your feelings, not according to what you think, not according to the person who's there because you got an inclination or liking towards them or whatever the case may be. Every person in the room ought to be able to do it. As long as you've been dealing with the word, if you can't, you failing yourself. You ain't failing me. You ain't failing you. I can tell you that. That's why I pay to read the book. That's why I pay to study the book. That's why I pay to pay attention. Because if you can't judge the smallest matters, then guess what that means? You ain't going to judge the world. And if you ain't going to judge the world, guess what that means? You going to be judged. Come on, man. Ain't that what he just told him? Y'all going to judge the world. You can't judge this. You know full well you know you ain't supposed to be going to no sin about no matter before you go to no Kadesh one. You ain't supposed to go to no sin about nothing. Now there's a congregation that's supposed to be right to the people, but you're going to a sinner for how he, how a sinner gonna judge right? We saw already see that that could he cracker don't judge nobody right every day. How many of y'all ever been through the court system for anything whatsoever? Ain't got to be criminal. There's many things you go through the court system for. I ain't never seen no right judgment in it. I ain't gonna say no. I seen a couple times. I seen a couple niggas there. I need to kill that nigga. They need to get it exactly what they gave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a couple niggas like, yeah, boy. I done seen some bad. Like I said, I seen some wrong judgment proceed. I seen a white boy that walked up to us in the dorm and say, I cut my my granddaddy's head off and went to the bank and said, Is this enough ID for you? And they gave that man five years. You know what I'm saying? I done told you about my homeboy, man. Yadi man, man. Nigga tried to rob me, shot him. Oh, yeah, he did that dead serious because my homeboy Yachty was so mad when he came back from court and said he had them five years that he threw the basketball like, whoo, because it was funny because the dude, dude got hit with the basketball in the head when Yachty threw it. Bah, hit him in the head. That nigga was like, boy, that's all right, boy. I can take a blow. I can take a blow. Next day, Cracker nodded him out. <laughs> that jump was fun. I said, well, what happened to you taking a blow? I forgot what they were going back and forth. But I kind of squared up with him. Bop, bop. Boom. I said, ooh, woo, I thought you could take a blow, boy. It better not get knocked out, my little white boy. That white boy. In the jailhouse, you can't get knocked out by no white boy. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't going to be able to live that down. We talking about jail stuff. Right? That jail stuff about this here. We can't get knocked out by no white boy. You got to get that white boy run. You know what I'm saying? That nigga hit him. The punches he threw were beautiful, too. They were beautiful. They were perfect. I'm to my perfect straight jab, straight to his face. Bah! 
That nigga was looking around, what happened? <laughs> That's how nigga gonna be looking when y'all come back. What happened? What happened? Don't look like that. Mara, get off my thigh now. I don't know you like that. Get on from under. But nevertheless, let's come on back to Isaiah 18. I want you to look at verse 4. We're going to tie into two different things that tie into the shot of the king being amongst them and the resurrection of the dead that we already started. And in the judgment, what we're looking at and meld them and bring them in together and then come back to that numbers 10 and meld that with that Exodus 19 so we can understand the significance of what these trumpets mean. Verse 4 of Isaiah 18. For Yahuwah said unto me, I will take my rest. Now that word for rest, well not rest, I don't want rest, my problem. And I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For afore the harvest when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprigs with the pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth and the fowl shall summer upon them, and the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. And that time shall the present be brought unto you, who of hosts, of a people scattered and peeled, and from, a, and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden underfoot, whose land the river spoiled, to the place of the name of Yahuwah of hosts, the Mount Zion. So what y'all, right? he said when he take his rest, he will consider in his dwelling place, where his dwelling place? Jerusalem is his dwelling place. Psalms 48 can tell you that. And numerous other places. Matthew 5, the city of the great king. Uh, but he say, like a clear heat upon herbs and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. What do you think that part means? And we've already touched that part with the clear heat upon the herbs. What is, a, what is it going to produce a herb? What does a herb come from? It's from a seed. So when we're looking at this herb, this herb is the seed that fell in the good ground that brought forth fruit. So that clear heat is what we read in Revelation where it said that the Ruach was what? Fire. So we say it's clear heat upon the herbs or clear heat or the Ruach HaKadosh upon the people. That's why you see a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. Cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. When is harvest time? You got three harvest times in this book. First fruits. First fruits. Which is that first fruits is the first fruits that they bring in during when? You got a first, you got, you really got two first fruits. You got Pentecost as first fruit, but then there's another first fruit you got to bring in. During Passover, do you not have to wave that offering that they had to bring? They got to bring, that's a harvest that they got to bring too. Then you got Pentecost, and then you got in gathering tabernacles so when you look at that at that do in the heat of the harvest why is it heat because it's affliction it's tribulation going on remember we read that in matthew 24 great tribulation in the sign of the son of man the do is the ruach hakadosh that he put because he say he's in his place of rest and he's going to consider when we say i will consider in my dwelling place when i take my rest pause hebrews chapter 4 mark mark I'll read 4 and 2 just to read it. 4 and 1. Hebrew 4 and 1. It ain't going to hurt nobody. Hebrew 4 and 1. Let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the Basar priest as well as unto them. But the word priest did not profit them not being mixed with the faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed to enter into rest, as he said, as I've sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, Elohim did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David today after so long, 
a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And what did his voice sound like when we read in, in, uh, in Exodus? Like a trump or a shofar. What is that shofar doing? It's causing you to be able to secure a pairing to the words of the highest. You know what I'm saying? So when he tell you today, hear his voice. So you need to pair yourself to his, his, his word. The other, like I said, when we looked at Torah, what are we sitting back looking at? You want to know the man with raised arms. So you want to know the man who sacrificed himself for you. That's why we preach him unto you. Then when you know that, you're joined together with his mind. Which would be already had been done because you would have already paired yourself with his word. When you pair yourself with his word, you pair yourself. Why do you think you who were asked the question in Isaiah 40? Who has known the mind of Yahuwah? You know what I'm saying? You can only know the mind of Yahuwah if you know his son. That's why he say, who have believed our report? To whom is the arm of Yahuwah revealed? Once the son is revealed, then you know the man with raised arms. Once you know him, you can join yourself to his mind. Once you join yourself to his mind, you move how Mashiach moved. This man say, must I not be about my father's business? But yet we live being about our business and make room for his business when we sign it suitable. That's not the mind that a Mashiach had. That man said, I did not come down here to do my own will, but the will of my father. There's no way that if we say we're going to be sons and daughters of the living Elohim, that our mind does not transfer over to that thought process. That I'm not here to do my own will. I'm here to do his will. I'm not here to fit my will around his will. You can't think like that and be renewed. That's why he said you need to renew your mind. It means you need to make you a new heart and a new spirit. That means you need to have a new breath in you. You have to need a new mind. You have to have a new way of thinking. And you have to think like the man whom you say is your savior and redeems you from death. It's really that simple. Everything that we do, man, whether word or no word, it starts with your mind, how you think, your mindset. You know what I'm saying? Like the people in the real estate game, they be going too far with it. But they always talk about, you know, you got to have the abundant mindset. Don't have a scarcity mindset. Like these niggas wake up in the morning and listen to affirmations and all that. You know what I'm saying? Some people might need that to motivate themselves. But they listen to them affirmations because if they hear this in their head over and over again, then they looking at it, it's going to become my thoughts. And if it becomes my thoughts, then that's how I'm going to move. That's why the Christian people tell you all the time about, we just went over this verse, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. But in reality, man, how you think is going to dictate how you operate. If you think selfishly, you will be selfish. You know what I'm saying? If you think carnally, you will be carnal. If you think that you can cut corners or let me do this here first and then I'll come to you, that's what you're going to do. But if you think like the son of Elohim, you will become the son of Elohim. It's not complicated. The book tells you it's simplicity in Hamashiach and that is the truth. It's not complicated. We're complicating it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to complicate it. Take his mind on. Taking his mind on is internalizing the word. But you can't internalize what you don't believe. You know what I'm saying? See, you can memorize what you don't believe because I know most of y'all didn't believe none of that crap they were teaching you in high school. You knew that's what you had to do to pass. Probably didn't believe 95% of the stuff they taught you in college. You were like, this is what I got to do to get my degree. So you didn't really care. That's why with stuff you memorize, that's why you forget it once you ain't using it no more. Things that you internalize, you don't never forget because they're a part of you. So when you find yourself forgetting the word, it's because you've been memorizing and not internalizing it. And you, like I said, you, you memorize what you don't believe. You remember a lot of stuff from college. You don't even use none of that do it. You remember stuff from college? Hello, hello. <laughs> You remember stuff from Berkeley? Yeah, I was part of that. Yeah, yeah. I was a musician. I, mean, it was already, I, was, I was taught it when I was kids. I had already experienced it. He said he was already, you a trained veteran. But Berkeley is a trade school, you know. Trades, it's all the same. It's still a skill. They they teaching you the ins and outs and outs and ins. I mean, but it ain't learning algebra. I don't, I don't know what to do algebra. I certainly don't. I, I, would, yeah, I, would. I never took calculus. Do you remember, you remember stuff you learned in college? Yeah, I mean, this one. I had a good memory and internalization, but as I've gotten older, my memory has gotten worse. 
I can't even blame it on the weed no more. I ain't smoked in a long time. So I can't blame it on that. I don't need me no joint. I need me a nice cold glass of water. Shayla, you remember stuff you did in college? You remember stuff from college, did? She got public speaking down pat. She got public speaking down pat. I seen her action. She held it down too. Lee, you remember stuff from school? No. You went to college, didn't you? No. <laughs> no. How dare you ask me such a thing? Oh, school. School. Verse number eight, right? For if Yahusha had given them rest, then they he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. Therefore remain therefore a rest to the people of Allahim. For he that is entered into his rest has ceased from his own works as Allahim did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man should fall after that same example of unbelief. So that's why he say he's sitting back and he's considering when he's entering his rest. Now in verse 5 of Isaiah 18, when he say, for the harvest, when the bud is perfect. Perfect here is uh, tamam. And that means to be at an end or to be complete. So when he say when the bud is ended or is complete, then he say the sour grape is ripening. He shall cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. What that sound like to y'all? He said there's a perfect bud and then there's sour grapes. Now, sour grapes is a word called bosur, and it also means unripe grapes. You got a bot and some mock and a rosh on that one. We won't deal with that for the moment. Sour grapes. Sour grapes in the use in the word four times. Y'all familiar with the saying in the book about sour grapes? What you know about sour grapes, Glover? Wow. Dinner, that because I had found out the other day that people didn't know that raisins were dried out grapes. I was just I thought everybody knew that raisins were grapes, but clearly everyone does not. Well, they unripe grapes. Anybody in here didn't know that? Who in here didn't know that raisins were grapes? How does he put your hand down? You don't even know that. Sad like this. He ain't going to embarrass me in front of my friends. I just thought that was common knowledge. But I'm telling you, the average person just like raising his raise. Well, I, I, but shoot, everybody in this room seemed to know that. So the average was in my favor. You didn't know that either? Who in here didn't know that? Clearly, them two. That two out of ten. Did you know that? You knew that? No, nah, because I'm trying to gauge the numbers that I that I gave for that. No, nah, I felt like it was like, shoot, at least eight to nine people know them grapes. I'm like, most raising things, they got grapes on the on the pack. No, nah, because somebody said they had a Nazarite vial, the nigga went and ate some raisins, oatmeal raisin cookie, talking about he didn't know that was a, from the vine. <laughs> nigga, you knew they were grapes, nigga. <laughs> you just wanted you some cookies. <laughs> Little cookies. But y'all know what it's going to? Let's look at Jeremiah 31 and 24 real fast. We know Mari like cookies. You like cookies? Yeah, that's my I told me you like cookies. I like cookies too. 31 and 24. Oh no, I think I'm in the wrong spot. Man, I picked the wrong girl. That white's only pie. That only pie. Come over to 24. Duh. Duh. Shout out 24. Yeah. Mm. 24 and 2. Because in Ezekiel 18, he talk about you'll no longer say that proverb about the sour, that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and you set your teeth on edge. Nope. And that's in the book of Jeremiah. But I can't recall the chapter right now. And I just read it earlier today, too. Definitely been in the wrong place. Nevertheless, 24 and 2 of Jeremiah. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. 
the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then said you who are unto me, what see thou, Jeremiah? And I said, figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Again, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah, the Elohim of Yasharal, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Yehuda, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them, and not pull them down, and I will plant them, and not pluck them, and I will give them a heart to know me, that I am Yahuwah, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall return unto me with the whole heart. Now notice right this here, right? So if he got if he got some uh hold on, and as these evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil, surely say of Yahuwah, so will I give Zechariah the Malak of Yehuda and his princes and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in his land. And then that dwell in the land of Misraim, and I will deliver them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb and a taunt and a curse in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, the pestilence among them, so they be consumed off the land that I gave unto them and to their father. So the good figs, he going to do what? He going to gather them, right? Evil figs, he going to do what? He going to kill them. Hmm? It's 31. It's 31. What verse is that? 29. Okay, come on. I know I, I, oh, I know I'm old, man. I told my mind back. 31 to 25. I ain't hungry. I had me too good. Hey, y'all, just so y'all know, future reference, boy. Might want to slide your way around there on Tropical Smoothie on game day, nigga. Sunshine Smoothie. $3 every time. I got me too. That's Hey, it's sunshine, so it is $3. It's going to cost you another dollar you want protein. Sunshine. I don't know nothing about 7 to 9. It's the same thing, though. Good morning, sunshine. Yeah, all I know is I went the other day. They had that big old sign. We'll get me $3 smoothie, and then get me two. Make sure my muscles are good and fed, because I know it's going to be a while before I eat again. You know what I'm saying? 31 and 24, right? Jeremiah. And there shall and there shall dwell in Yehuda itself in the cities thereof together husbandmen, and they that go forth with flocks. For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I awaked and beheld my sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, say of Yehuda, that I will sow the house of Yasharal, the house of Yehuda, with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that as I like I watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant. And those days shall they say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eat the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. What you think he mean when he tell you he going to set your teeth set on edge because you done ate a sour grape? Well, let's look at something real quick. Yeah, yeah, some national tea. Cause what he told you he gonna do with those who eat, who ate the sour grape? He gonna kill them. You eating sour grapes? Guess what that mean? Unripe grapes. That mean eat the evil figs. Mm -hmm. Matthew thirteen. Good tree cannot put forth bad yeah, fruit. Oh, there it is. Good tree bring forth good fruit. Corrupt tree bring forth corrupt fruit. That's sour grapes. That's sour grapes. What he told you he was gonna do with a tree if it don't bring forth no fruit? I'm going to cut it down and throw it in the fire. Burning. What did we just say? Ain't that what he told you and what we just seen in Isaiah 18? That's why the difference got to make sure you're right. Shout out. And guess what? He said he was no iniquity or perverseness in Jacob. And Yah his Allah, he was with him. And there was a shot of a what? A king. Why is the shot of the king with you? Because it's good fruit in you. And when he tell you this here, because you know, you know, bruise all across the country, all across the world, love to scream about fruit. You ain't got no good fruit and you sin it. There ain't no good fruit, nigga. Cause now you trying to say you a mixed tree. Ain't no mixed tree, nigga. You ain't never seen an apple and an orange tree, have you? Oh, that tree got apple and oranges on it. Nah, it's just an apple tree. That's how niggas be feeling. Oh, so you got corrupt. You know, I'm, I, I bring forth good fruit. I sin, I fall short. Then you a corrupt tree. Because of my shot saying a good tree don't bring forth corrupt fruit. That take it back. Ain't no iniquity or perverseness. Yah has a, so you're gonna take that's the part that killed me. The ruach in you, but you sin. How? How? 
That don't make sense. Because now you saying y'all sent them. That's a strong statement. You know what I'm saying? That's a strong statement to make. Some of you putting words in my mouth. I'm just putting the word in your mouth. But that what the word say, nigga. Take it how you want. Where we were going? Mark 13. I mean, Matthew 13. Lil Henry. Lil Henry Jones. Hmm? Thirteen and twenty-four. Got more head than you got body. And another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of Shamahim is likened unto a man with so good seed in the field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, did thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence did it have tares? He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Was thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while we gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them, but gather the wheat in my bone. Now what do we see in Isaiah 18 that is very, very similar to this? Did he not say that he'll cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches? And since he said after the harvest when the bud is perfect, but the sour grape is ripening in the flower. So that means that there's some, some sour grapes or some tares growing along the good fruit. So he said, I got to cut them off. Then he said, when I do this, they'll be left together with the fowls. And that's taking us to let the birds and the animals eat the flesh of the wicked. That's when you end. He said, at that time, I will then gather my people and bring them to Zion, which brings us back to Numbers chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Got more head than you got about it. Numbers 10 and uh, oh, four. And what I didn't pull from that there with the trumpet blowing long and the heads grabbing while I got it because we run starting to run long, run, run too long. That's the 144,000. Didn't he say he got to gather them first? They gather up to him. You think they just gonna be like, oh, this is my shot, let's go. He gonna blow the trumpet long and they gonna go first. Verse 5. He said, when you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. Six, when you blow an alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey and shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall blow the trumpets, and they shall go for you, shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you, then you shall blow on along with the trumpets and you shall be remembered before you who are your Elohim and you shall be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your offerings, your burnt offerings, over your sacrifice of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am you who are your Elohim. Notice the day of your gladness. Would not trumpets be considered to be a day of your gladness? That's why he's that's why that's how that that's how that these feasts meld in together. Because he's still gonna blow a tree, he's gonna blow a trumpet to gather you up, right? Now the word for trumpets here, right, is uh cat's tarah. You got a cot, a, two sods, a rosh, and a hay. I want you to come over here to Second Chronicles. Well, first Chronicles 15. Yeah, that's number 10. Huh? What we just read in numbers was this. He blows an alarm, and the people on the east walk, blow another alarm, the people on the south walk. They take their journey. But he said, but when the congregation is to be gathered together, then you just blow the trumpet. You don't sound an alarm. And then after that, he said, the sons of Aaron blow the trumpets. And if we go to war and we blow an alarm, we'll be remembered. So when we look at when we go on being oppressed, I should say, when you looking at that one now, that take us back to what we were looking at in Zechariah on Shabbat. 
Two thirds of cut, take, uh, be cut off and die. A third will go through the fire, and they shall call on the Elohim, and He will be remembered of them, and He will come. It's the same thing He said in Isaiah 65. While we are yet calling, while the words are still in our mouth, He will answer. So while we're being oppressed by the beast and by the false prophet, the same way that when you seen in Exodus when we cried unto Him, we were heard. The same way that you lift up your voice. And shout, it's going to be as a trumpet under him. It's going to be that Torah. And he's going to hear it. And we're going to be remembered before him. And then he's going to smash these people. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's important. to know. Because when he blow long, see, when he blow once, the 144,000 gone. See, everybody ain't going to hear that trump. Only the ones who's supposed to hear it going to hear it. You know what I'm saying? He, when he blow an alarm, that's what you were seeing with them seven Malachim. And you supposed to be moving. Because there's an alarm coming, there's danger. But we already see when he blew that alarm, ain't nobody listen. So the last one would be the one for war? The last one for that's yeah, that's the one he coming for war. Yeah, because he tell you to blow the trumpet in Zion and, and it's and it's finna go down. You know what I'm saying? But then he tell you he blow one when he blow it just a blow, that's when you supposed to gather to the door. And that takes us back to the shout of the king as a muscle. But that's a different word for trumpets here. And like I said, that's that cot, two saws, a rosh, and a hay. And when that, when that one, we're looking at that, behold, the highest is going to lead you to the way and protect his harvest. You know what I'm saying? He's going to protect his harvest. Now, he's going to lead you to the way. He done led you to a mashiach. And because he led you to, because all these trumpets he's talking about is protection for his people. You know what I'm saying? And then we, we, we turn around and we look at what we see in Isaiah 18. That's his harvest because he said the perfect bud. Everything been brought to an end to be complete. That goes back to what we read in Revelation 11 when he said, you know, now the time of Elohim has come to give a reward unto his servants. And he going to protect his. That's why I'm telling you it's important to understand that. Hey, Go ahead. Oh, when the when the that's for the summer figs. That's for you to know that the time of harvest has come. The same way that if you were still in an agricultural society and you were planting your summer crops, that you would be harvesting around tabernacles. That when you seen that fig bl blossom and bloom, then you would know that that time is near. You know what I'm saying? That's why I be telling y'all like if you're supposed to know the book, you are gonna know when his time. When the time of our redemption is near. And we know from looking at the book. It ain't nowhere close. Not a close like niggas be on the internet talking. Oh there are hurricanes coming. It was a lot of hurricanes coming six years ago. Niggas thought he would come. Oh there was an earthquake. Boy I think in 2011. It seemed to be like an earthquake every other day. But he told you that's just the beginning of sorrow. Oh it's nations against nations. Ain't nobody went to woe yet. Ain't nobody went to woe yet. What woe you done seen? Not now. See, but this is the stuff that caused people to fall away from the word because this is what y'all want. This is what he wants you to do. I told you to say, if you know the word, then you know what to look for. That's why our nigga, that's why the stuff happened. You don't see, I don't be moved by none of it. They be like, oh, Trump. Nigga said Obama was an antichrist for eight years and get what he doing. Getting paid a half a million dollars to do speeches. Now he's like, oh, Trump, the head of Christ. He just an old, funny-looking white man. That's all there. Making other white people mad. Ain't nobody thinking about him. He don't line up with no book. He ain't even considered about no book. Ain't nobody in this world following Donald J. Trump. Nobody. You know what I'm saying? Even the people who voted for him ain't even following him. They just felt like he hate niggas and spicks. That's good enough for us. And he just did that. They said this man completely over his head and what he's doing. I think that Christ just wanted to be president just to say I was president. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so what, what would be considered the north country? Oh, shoot. Like somewhere north of, north of the land. Okay. Like the actual geographical location of being north of Jerusalem. You know what the Hebrews like to say? That's North America. Yeah. That don't say North America. It said the north country. Cause so they called it North America. You made that be the North Country. Man, that's some niggertry if I ever heard it. Well, nigga, 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 nigga. Well, niggas say sound like niggas to me. 
That's an old video. I ain't seen that in a long time. Uh, that joint was hilarious. First Chronicles 15. Yeah, man. You got to really, when you, when, and honestly, if you understand the word and you know how stuff going to go down, then that's suppo that should be comforting to your soul. I would help. I still grab the wrong dog on first, man. Probably because that's probably supposed to be for chapter 5. Let me see if that's chapter 5. If not, I'm going to move on because we're running long. You're running long. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 5 because we're running long. Second Chronicles 5, verse 7. And the priest brought in the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah unto his place, to the oracle of, of the house, and to the most Kadesh place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the Ark, and the cherubims covered the Ark and the stays thereof above. And they drew out the stays of the Ark, and at the end of the stays were seen the ark from the Ark before the oracle. But they were not seen without and there it is unto it unto this day. And there was nothing in the ark save the tables which Moses put therein at Horab, when you who had made a covenant with the children of Yasharal, when they came out of Mishraim. He came to pass when the priests would come out of the Kadesh place, for all the priests that were presented were sanctified and did not and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jaduthan, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets and it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahuwah and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised Yahuwah saying for he is good for his mercy endure forever that then the house was filled with the cloud even the house of Yahuwah so why did we come and look at that that's that same word that behold the highest leads the way to protect his harvest all those people gather together sound like what you read in Revelation when it said all those people come together and say hallelujah and praise Yah for the destruction of Babylon. And all those people are standing before the throne because, you know what I'm saying? And they singing that song. Because what do they all have on? White what? And the linen is what? It's just the righteousness of the saints. Do you know what I'm saying? And why did they have that white linen on? Because that trumpet blew over that ark to say that Yah was coming. Because, you know, they looked at when the Ark of the Covenant was in the camp, Yah was there. So when that trump is blown, you try to make sure that you are there where you're supposed to be at to be gathered. Because he said, what did, what did the Mashiach tell you? He is the door and everybody got to come in the door. So when that trumpet is blown, you're being gathered to the door. Let's take ourselves to Isaiah 27 because I'd be remiss if I didn't get it. And I have many more that I ain't get. But you can't get it all every time. Abigail having a long night, ain't it? 27 and 12. It shall come to pass in that day that Yahuwah shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Mizraim, and you shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Yasharal. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet, and that is shofar here as well, so we know full well y'all ain't blowing no doggone. Ram's horn. But at the same token, remember, right, on the day that this great trumpet is blown is because you secured or through this man's sacrifice, because you sacrificed yourself, you paired yourself to the word. And what did we read in John 5 before? Anybody that hear his voice? Well, you hearing his voice because you did what? You believed on his word. So you got to you have to sacrifice yourself. That's what we're looking at securing. You have to sacrifice yourself to pair yourself to this man's word. Or you're not going to hear that trumpet. Shall be blown and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Mizraim and shall worship Yahuwah in the Kadesh Mount in Jerusalem. Do you see how they keep coming back to that mount in Jerusalem? How they take us back to that ensign on that mountain? That's why we looked at what we looked at with that mountain, taking it back to him coming back to the Mount of Olives. Because when he blow that trumpet, everybody's gathering to the door or you're gathering to meet him in the Mount of Olives so you can gather to meet him in Jerusalem, to be in Jerusalem because you're going to go where he going. 
Remember this man say, wherever the lamb is, where I am, my servant will be also. That's the same thing one of the servants of David said. I'm following you where you go. That comes up because you sitting back looking at that. I'm here to do your will and your bidding. I'm following you. I ain't following me. Oh, no. She called your whole name. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And after that, 1 Corinthians 15. I mean, I still got a little bit of time, but I don't want to go too, too long. Matter of fact, pause. Come over here to Judges. Let me see what I can work with here in Judges. I want to see what that's going on with what I got going on. Nah, I will say judges for another time. Yeah, I'll say that for another time. Let's look at Psalm 47 before I wrap this up. Psalms 47 and 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto Elohim with the voice of triumph. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto Elohim with the voice of triumph. Why do you think you shout with a voice of triumph? Because that goes with what we were talking about on the Shabbat, that who is he that believe, who, who is he that overcome the world? But he that believe that Yahusha is the son of Elohim. This is our victory. Any of y'all ever shouted in triumph? That's how you're supposed to be feeling with the word. That's what he just told you to do. Yeah. When you triumph, it's because you won. For Yahuwah Most High is terrible. He is a great malik over all their rats. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, say la. This is what he said. Elohim has gone up with a shout. Yahuwah with the sound of a trumpet. And that's that shofar again. So you notice that he equates this man's voice to a trumpet. Sing praises to Elohim. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For Elohim is king over all the earth. Sing ye praises. This is what he told you to do. Sing praises with what? Understanding. See, it's a lot of niggas thinking, I'm praising and worshiping. He told you to say, if you ain't going to sing praise, it was understanding. Keep your mouth closed. Ain't that what he just told you to do? Now, I, I, I will ask you a question. Did not Hamashiach say, what did Hamashiach describe the Psalms as? A couple times. In John, John 15, he described it as this. In John 10, he described it as this. When he was telling them about Psalms 82, he said it was written in your what? So that's the, so the law just don't stop. So that's an instruction. Now, I'm not knocking nobody who do praise and worship. Please don't think that I, what I'm doing. But this man just told you, sing you praises with what? So if you ain't got no understanding, you ain't got no business singing no praises then because you ain't doing it like he told you to do it. So when you sing in praises of Elohim, that, that, that's why you see it's imperative to have understanding, what doesn't it? Because he just said, I'll read it again. For Elohim is king over all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. Colossians 3 and 14. You got how many people you feel you done ran across, they call themselves singing praises, y'all they don't do it with no understanding. You know the first thing they say? Won't he do it? He always on time. All these cliche statements that people say, but it's never with understanding of who he is. If you're going to praise y'all, praise y'all because you understand his will. You understand who he is. How could you serve and love somebody you don't even understand? But that's what a millions upon millions of people do with this Bible every day. Don't even understand the person who they say they love and believe. Colossians 3 and 14. And he said, above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the shalom of Elohim rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Hamashach dwell in you richly. 
in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the master. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the master, Yahushua, giving thanks to Elohim and Abba by him. So if you sing in spiritual songs and hymns, this is another reason, too. When y'all be making records, I'd be like, man, this don't be coming on these records, dropping those scriptures just to be dropping those scriptures. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're going to admonish one another, if you're admonishing someone and you're exhorting somebody, don't you have to have some understanding to be able to correct them or encourage or warn them with? Not just a nigga who can rap to put as many Bible verses in a song. He says, sing ye praise it with understanding. We know that the son of Elohim is coming, giving us an understanding that we should know him that is true, that we are in him that is true. Even your son, Yahushua HaMashiach, this is the true Elohim in eternal life. He said, Abba, I finished the work that you gave me to do. Now honor my name, Yahushua HaMashiach, and to those who I'm going to give eternal life to. That's what he prayed in John chapter 17. Every time a Mashiach spoke, he spoke with understanding, did he not? So how are you going to sing praises to a man that you ain't even praising him with understanding? The buying, the insight. How you ain't got the insight? How you don't know how the sun works eternal life? How you don't know that? Because that's what you're looking at when you look at buying the bot, the yard, and the noon. How you don't know the sun work eternal life? Well, you know the sun work eternal life because you know him. And you know him because the shout of a, of a king or the Torah is with you because you were sitting around and you paired yourself to his thoughts or his mind or his word. It's just that simple. We're not pairing ourselves to his mind. We're not pairing ourselves to his word. That's why we're not getting no understanding. So then the word is not being profitable or fruitful for us. And then we thinking there's something wrong with the word when really there's something wrong with us. We haven't fully given us. We haven't fully sacrificed ourselves. See, what you did is you think about, I'll let you put a nail in. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. No, no, no. Don't put that nail in my hand. I think that's going to hurt. Some of you ain't even got the father to the point to decide whether to put the nail in. You like this here. Oh, no, nah, I'm finna call on these 12 ladies and angels right now, boy. Cause these boys ain't finna snatch me. Some of you ain't even got that far. You were like, ah, but let the cup pass. And you like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. I'm finna go on to the hop. Some of you ain't got that far when you got to say, we looking for Yahusha Nazareth. Like, shoot, that's that nigga over there. You went and said, you went and said it with Peter standing next to you with Yahusha. I lied on the man. Cause said, not me. Not me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm using that analogy of what if he would have done that instead of dying? Cause when we not fully giving ourselves over, that's what we doing. We bucking the jack. We trying to find a way out of doing what he did. Now imagine if he would have did that, what state we would be in. We would have no hope. Why read this book? Why even hold to it? Shoot, you could be watching Sunday Night Football if that's the case. Shoot, most of y'all probably wouldn't even be married. You know what I'm saying? Because you wouldn't feel the need to. you probably keep on playing house. You wouldn't feel like, what's the need to do it in a righteous fashion? I ain't got no reward. Ain't no gift of eternal life coming. Do you see how different? It, that's why That's why he say don't be like a sinners who have no hope. Because when you ain't got no hope, then you have no standard to hold to. You could care less. Why do it? I ain't got nothing coming. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And when I say that, meaning why do it? I ain't got nothing coming. I mean, there's no promise for you. So you don't have any reason to live by your faith to endure to receive the promise because you know ain't no promise coming to you. Ain't no promise been made because he failed his mission. What you talking about, Sugar Shirley? Yeah, little ruddy baby. First Thessalonians 4 and 13. Yeah. For if we believe that Yahushua died and rose again, even so then we're sleeping Yahushua, will Elohim bring with him? For this we say unto you by the word of the master, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the master shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the master himself shall descend from Shamahim with a shout, and they go your Torah, with the voice of the ark Malachim, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead and the Mashiach shall rise first. That's why, it's That's why that trumpet is important. How you going to gather to the door? And in order for that shout of the king to be amongst you, because we didn't already, that iniquity and that perverseness got to be gone. 
because when the iniquity and perverseness is gone, then Yah, your Elohim is with him. And we know that he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And he said, Abba, I know you hear me in all things. I know you are always with me. And he was with him because he came to do his Abba's will and not his own. It's really just that simple. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 15. We'll close it from there. And we already really look, and I ain't going to in depth like that Psalm 47, how he talked about what we were talking about beforehand. He's going to he gonna take these people out. You see how he said he's going to come with a shout in a trunk? And people wonder why Paul said he's coming with a shout in a trunk. Besides the fact that he said he came with a shout in Exodus and a trump in Exodus. Besides the fact that it says that in, uh, in Isaiah. That's why I seen a dude the other day, oh, Paul just coming up with his stuff, people defending him. You niggas just don't know the book. Just don't know the book. And y'all know the book. So don't waste your opportunity of salvation uh, pussyfooting around. Yeah. Don't put your left foot in and your right foot out. Just go ahead and put both feet in. That's what you like to do when the, that's what you like to do when you're testing the water, see if it's warm enough. You're gonna mess around and test that lake of fire water, you're gonna see it real warm. And that just don't make no sense. Uh, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Elohim, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The same, Isaiah 18, we're bearing witness to it. We briefly talked about it with numbers. And the whole purpose of what we're looking at is that when that last trumpet is blown and that shout is given, you resurrected from the dead. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the Torah. But thanks be to Elohim, which give us victory through our master, Yahushua HaMashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the master, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. And Yahushua. So hallelujah for Yahushua and the word. You'll we'll stop it right there. Appreciate all y'all this evening. Bless y'all out the house of Yahuwah. I doubt seriously I pre preach tomorrow, but you never know. So y'all willing? Give a heads up if I do. Jay Quellen. And say A A Ron. But I bless y'all out the house of y'all the name of Yahoo Shah. I appreciate all y'all love all y'all. Y'all willing? Yeah. Day of Atonement. What day the twenty fifth? Yeah. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock PM on for Day of Atonement. Which is that? That's a Wednesday, I know that too. Tuesday. So Y'all know this here, right? Unless you got to go to work Wednesday, wherever we gathering at, because you know we got to do what we got to do. Ain't no sense of you going home talking about getting on no stream or getting on no phone. That's just utterly insane. That don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? That don't make no sense at all. So, yeah.